Hello everyone, let's solve a fluid flow problem. They want us to find the volumetric flow rate for a fluid flow between two parallel plates. We can see them drawn right here. Uh, these two plates have an in, they are inclined and they have an angle theta with respect to the horizon right here. They tell us that the distance between these two plates is h, the width of the plate is w, they also tell us that we're dealing with a steady state, fully developed condition, and we have constant properties. All right, let's uh, solve this problem. Okay, volumetric flow rate. What kind of formula can we use to find this guy? Well, right here. Volumetric flow rate is equal to velocity times area. The area we know, right, because we have H and W both are given, so that takes care of the area, but the, vo uh, the velocity is not given, and we need to know that it will not be constant, right? Because if we take a sample right here, it will be a different velocity than if we take a sample right here, or here, or somewhere else in the flow, right? So velocity will be a function. And also, I wrote here what kind of units would you have, right? Just for us to remember it, it's meters cubed per second or cubic feet per second, whichever unit you would be working with. But we are deducting a formula here, so we're not working with direct numbers, so we're not going to deal with units, but just as reference. So, in order to find our u function, the velocity function, we're going to rely on the conservation equations. We have conservation of momentum, conservation of mass, conservation of energy, right? Let's see, which one are we going to need here? Do we have any heat transfer and temperature data given? No. So therefore, the con uh, conservation of energy, we're not going to be using it. But for to find the volumetric flow rate, we need velocity. And if we solve the conservation of momentum, that's what we're going to get. We're going to get the velocity function. And in order to solve this guy, we're going to use the conservation of mass or continuity equation, right, as a side help. It's going to help us solve the conservation of momentum. Okay. So, conservation of momentum or otherwise known as Navier-Stokes equations. This is the incompressible form, right? Because they told us constant properties and like density, uh, viscosity, and such. So here is this nice long formula. Let's see. We're going to have to cancel out a whole bunch of things, but we need to make sure we're going to have valid reasons for crossing them out. First up, they told us steady state. So that means no change with respect to time. As we look at this long formula, we can see that there's only one term that's actually dependent on time, and that's the very first one right here. And since there's no change with respect to time, we can cross it out. Next, let's take a look at u and v. This one, and, well, hold on, v and w, these two guys. Let's take a look at these two guys. So, this is a flow downhill between these two plates. And it's a one-dimensional flow. What that means, that every single molecule of this flow is flowing in one direction. And that is the u direction, the x, right? x, which the velocity for it is u. So that means that we do not have absolutely any molecules going towards this plate in the y direction or the other direction this way or actually going across in the w direction right none of those happening the only direction that this flow is happening is u therefore v and w are zero another dimensional analysis that we can do is on this term right here we just said that there's nothing changing in the w direction right so whatever u profile we would have right here close to this edge going up towards this edge is it gonna look exactly the same if you pick something in the middle 
right here and come up to the top plate or at the other side and come up to the top plate so the profile between these two plates will be exactly the same as you transverse from this side towards the other side there's no change they will look exactly the same so this term no change we can go ahead and cross it out we are analyzing this one dimensional flow in two dimensions which is x and y we're not analyzing it in w okay because it's the same no change there let's see what else let's take a look at this term right here the change of pressure with respect to x so this is between two plates there's possible to have pressure right so what is the change of this pressure as we go along this x direction now is this going to be a variable or is this going to be a constant this is very important question and we're going to come here and look at this statement that they gave us fully developed well whenever this happens that simply means that the pressure change is constant there will be pressure changing right as we come along this plate here 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 there will be a different pressure but the change will be a constant rate so this is a constant that's it that's all we need to know all right if it wouldn't be a constant then you would not end up with a differential equation you would end up with a partial differential equation and that would be a whole different can of worms can of worms okay so by this being constant it helps out a lot so fully with the fully developed constant well, what else let's take a look at these two guys this one and this one we're going to be able to cross them out because of the conservation of mass see here u is not a zero we just discussed it that we have a flow in the u direction right so it's not zero the change will be zero and that needs to be justified through the conservation of mass right here this is the conservation of mass equation in compressible steady form there you go three terms equal zero same thing we can go ahead no change in the v no change in the w and therefore we can deduct it here it is that the change of u with respect to x is zero so we can come here and cross it out because we justified it now what about this term now mathematically thinking if we take a derivative of something and it's zero now we take another derivative of that zero it'll be just zero again right so there you go z we can cross this guy out as well okay we've crossed out everything that we there was to be crossed out now let's take a look at this term right here this is the body forces term we need to analyze this so what kind of body force we're dealing with here and that is gravity gravity is our body force that we need to take into consideration so if uh, let's just say if this uh, setup would have been a horizontal setup like this let's pretend this is a horizontal line that i draw uh, the gravity would be going straight down right so this would be g but here we have an inclined slope and we are going our x is not uh, horizontal or vertical we have an angle splitting this up so in order to include the correct value here in our body force we need to make sure we break this g vector up into its component here's my g y component and here's the gx component so we can do this because from trigonometry we can deduct that this angle is exactly the same as this one right here and here it is the gx would be equal to g times sine theta and gy equals g times cosine theta now our x direction because that's the one we are working with right in the navier stokes we need the x component that would be simply this one gx equals g times sine theta 
this guy right here. This is the one we're going to simply plug in right here. Okay, we did everything we could do to this equation. So let's go ahead. We're going to clean it up and write down what we have left. Here's just, uh, I copied and pasted it right here just so we can see what we crossed out. So here it is on the left hand side, everything's crossed out. So we have zero left. On the right hand side, we have the body force minus the pressure term plus kinematic viscosity times this component right here, the one we didn't cross out, the uh, second derivative of u with respect to y. Okay, I plug in the body forces, the g times sine theta. I'm going to go ahead and multiply the equation by density, and using this equation, I'm going to be able to get rid of uh, density right here. And I'm going to turn this into dynamic viscosity instead of this kinematic viscosity. If you don't want to multiply it and just keep going with the kinematic viscosity, go for it. It's not going to change anything. Okay, here I collected terms and I switched some stuff around. I moved the second derivative on the left hand side and all the terms on the right hand side, they simply all constant, right? And nothing uh, else. Well, it, it kind of looks a bit menacing, right? But if we look back on our differential equation uh, class, we can see that it's nothing really more complicated than this right here. X uh, double prime equals 15. So this is the differential equation that describes our flow. So we need velocity, which is just u by itself. So in order to get that, we're going to have to take an integral of this equation of both sides two times. Okay, so let's get started. First integral of both sides, that's going to result in this one, in uh, first derivative of u with respect to y, and here we're going to have this massive constant y plus c1. Now to continue, we're going to do a second derivative, and that's going to result in us finally arriving to u, the velocity profile that we are seeking. And on the right hand side, we have the constant y squared over 2 plus c1y plus c2. And this would be the general solution to our differential equation, which was this one, right? Okay. But we're going to need to go ahead and find the particular solution. That means we need to find c1 and c2. Since we have two unknowns, we're going to need two boundary conditions that will help us find them. So first one, I'm going to pick a point right here on the, right here in this this spot right here. And that is y equals zero. That means u equals zero. So since we are dealing with a no slip condition, what does that mean? It means that the very last molecule of this bottom plate and the very first molecule of the fluid that's flowing here, they're stuck together. Okay. They, they, they're not moving. There's zero velocity. Of course, as we go further and further away from the plate, right, we will have velocity. But right here, at the, the very the interface line, right, no move, no movement. I'm gonna pick the second boundary condition at the other plate at the top. The same way I pick this one at the interface line. Y equals h because that's what they told us. The, diff, the distance between these two plates is h. Again, the velo velocity becomes zero. These two are my boundary conditions that will help find c1 and c2. So uh, I'm going to use the second equation, which is this one. And I'm going to plug in my boundary conditions. First, let's start with the first one. Plug it in. This is what will result and that will tell me that c2 is equal to zero. Again, we're going to use the uh, second equation for the second time. I'm going to plug in but the second uh, boundary condition now, which is this one. That's going to result in this and it will tell me that c1 is equal to this massive constant right here. h over 2 times uh, dynamic viscosity. And in parentheses, we have uh, the change of uh, P, pressure, with respect to X, minus 
rho g sine theta. Plug these two back into our general solution and bam, we have our particular solution, which is our velocity profile right here. Well, if they would have asked us that uh, they want us to find the velocity profile, then whoopty, here it is, you found it, mission accomplished. But they asked us to find the volumetric flow rate, right? So let's continue. We're going to use the velocity profile that we found to find the vol volume flow rate. The, vol the formula that we said that we are using for it is volumetric flow rate equals velocity times area. But since our u is not a constant, we cannot use this equation as is. We're going to have to go ahead and use its integral form, which is right here. Well, this would be the integral of velocity times the derivative of the area. And the dA part breaks up into width times height. The width is W, which is just simply given, and it's a constant, so that's what it is. And the dy is going to be this part right here. Let me change colors right here, this one. We're going to be differentiating with respect to this uh, length okay so if you're confused which one should i use the dw or dy what what's what's what well in when we were analyzing this flow in the w direction right we said that the flow profile let's see how it be so the profile if we look at it right here at the, let's say at this edge would be the exactly same as if we would pick a spot in the middle or all the way at the other edge, right? Same look, there's no change in it. But if we take a look at it with respect to the Y direction, then we can see that the profile looks different here. This is a different velocity than here, than here, than here. So there's change. And that's why we need to integrate to capture this change. Plus, another thing, you can take a look at your velocity. And if you look at its function, the one we just found, it is dependent on y, not on z, on y. So there's two ways for you to remember which one you need to utilize. Okay, let's go ahead and plug in the velocity profi profile that we just found times W. Make sure you don't accidentally forget this W over here. And let's start working on solving this integral. I'm going to factor out some constant and turn this one integral into two. Here it is. I, we can see that we are evaluating it from zero to H. There you go. It evaluated simplify it and we can finally arrive to our volumetric flow rate and that would be right here we can see that it is equal to w times h cubed over 12 times the dynamic viscosity and in parentheses we have density uh, times gravity times sine theta minus the change of pressure with respect to x now, sometimes they could ask us that, uh, find the volumetric flow rate on a per unit width. Well, all that means we just divide the width out of this equation. So basically, the W would be cancelled. And then there we go. This would be your uh, final result right here. All right. So this is our final answer. Uh, I hope you guys like this video. Please give it a thumbs up so other people can find it as well. And have a great day.